Hey guys, Motor Car Nut here today, and we're going to be uh, uh, tearing down a Subaru engine from a 2013 uh, Forester with a 2.5, and this engine was partially seized. I had a video on how to take this engine out of the car. You can watch that one if you want to know how to take it out, and I'm going to put it on a stand soon, and we're going to start taking it apart. I already mounted my stand mount here. Uh, I took the flywheel off. Okay, it's right here. It's a 14 millimeter bolts. You just mark everything. Mark the um, um, the um, the shield in the back of it. And the way you take it off, the way you put it back on, that, um, that shield over here, uh, it goes into the um, crank sensor over here. So it's a, a ring, I'm sorry, it's a ring. And, um, okay, so now I'm just gonna put it on the stand, we're gonna start taking it apart. Okay, so we're on the stand, and what I like to do is take the electrical connectors off first. So you just mark things if you don't know where they go. Okay, you check off all the electrical connectors. If there's any kinds of grounds, you can always mark it, you can mark them. But usually the uh, harness is bent a certain way that, you know, when you put it back, you know which sensor it went to because the wires are bent that way, like this one. This goes to the power steering. It's right there. It's really hard for it to think that it can go here when it's when it's pretty much bent this way. But anyway, if you like to mark things, you can mark them. So, you know, you take off everything that's electrical, all the harnesses and everything, get the harnesses out of the way. Okay, and then, and then we're going to continue with that. Now, the uh, front, front pulley bolt, that's a 22 millimeter, and you're gonna need an impact to get that off, or if like you watched my video when I was pulling it out, when it was in the car, you can break it loose with a breaker bar. Okay, so I'm gonna do the electrical right now. Get the, uh, the harness right out of the way over here. You put it there, and like I said, when you put it back on, it's all pretty much gonna line up. Over here, we have 14 millimeter, Bolts, one, two, three, four, and five. And this whole bracket comes off, okay? And after this, uh, I'm gonna take the front cover off, okay? So now, let's say if you're doing a head gasket or you wanna do the valve timing, I'm, I'm gonna do the timing, the uh, ignition valve timing and everything, I'm gonna do that when I put it back together. But right now, this is a disassembly. So if you wanna know how to take off something, you can watch part of the video as I'm doing it. And even if it's in the car, you get an idea where the bolt locations are and what to expect when you take off the covers and things like that. So it's not just a disassemble. So you can pause at any time and get, uh, get a good idea of what you're doing or what's gonna be involved before you start. All right, so right now, I'm gonna take off, uh, like I said, this, and then I'm gonna take off the front cover. Front cover bolts look like they're 12s all the way around. Um, yeah, looks like it's all the way around. Actually, you gotta take off the water pump too. So the water pump, I think maybe just the pulley right now I could just take off. I got the side car, the uh, val um, timing cover off. Now, there's gonna be some pry, pry points here there's going to be a pry point here and here. And on the bottom, there's going to be a little pry point. Do little, little, little. Do it very gingerly around. Do not, you know, crank it. You know, on one side, you'll, you can break the cover. Okay, a little bit because it's glue. So what you do, once you get it open a little bit, you can put like a screwdriver, like just slide a screwdriver in there to keep tension on it. And then work your way a little bit more. Then put another screwdriver in there, a little tension all the way around until the glue pops off. So... As we know, this, this engine was uh, seized. Now, if you look here, the um, timing chain um, tensioners, they're fine. They don't move in. Chain is fine, nice and tight. Did not, no, no, um, no uh, guides are broken. This one, timing chain is nice and tight, but look at this. Okay, so this is not good. This is actually a part of a connecting rod. You see, that's the stud destroyed. So the ends, the crank is destroyed. Uh, probably a block is destroyed. I was, uh, 
wishing it was something else, but we're going to take it more apart and see. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the timer. you got to mark everything if you don't know where things go, but you see the all, the, all the chains. If you're going to reuse the chain, um, sometimes it's a good idea you're doing this job to replace the chain and the, ten and the uh, tensioners and everything. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take off the... Um, the timing chain tensioners and the chains and everything like that. And we're gonna take it from there. Okay, before taking off all the timing uh, components, I wanted to take off the uh, oil pan to see any damage and we're, we're in bad shape over here. We have metal filings there, another chunk of rod here. So bad. Uh, all pieces here. I think there was even a piece of a piston. So something exploded in here. Did I have that piece of piston? Uh, I don't know where. Whoa. No. No, that's not it. I, I actually, I had it. It must have fell back inside. All right. So uh, I'm going to continue with the um, taking off the, um, the valve gears and guides and everything. So now that everything is out. Um, you put everything, when you take it off, do this. You put everything back pretty much the way you see it. Okay, the chains, make sure if you're reusing the chains, the chains go the exact same way. There's an inner and there's a right and left. Make sure that they, that, you know, whatever, however you took it off, you put it back on. Okay. And I even do that sometimes, especially when I have four or five different cars in the garage with all different types of engines, you get, you know, sometimes it's just easier. And also you have to pay attention on the timing cover. There's gonna be an O-ring here. There's an O-ring right here. Okay, there's an O-ring right here. And there's an O-ring right here. Over here, that's just silicone, you know, the gasket maker. That goes here. That goes here. Um, that goes here. That goes here, and that goes here. These are not O-rings. This is just a silicone maker, okay? So now, after uh, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the engine up, and I'm going to take off the uh, valve covers. I'm going to have the ignition coils here, 10 millimeter. Take the ignition coils out. There's going to be spark plugs in there. You're going to need a skinny, a skinny uh, socket. I have one. What is this? This is a 14 millimeter. It's a little bit different than the uh, traditional socket. The traditional socket's not gonna fit in there. They're skinnier. Okay, then you take off the uh, 10 millimeters for this, uh, the cam cover right here. You take that off, it's gonna have a gasket. This gasket, take that out of the way. Okay, and now what we're gonna do uh, take the um, cams out. We're going to take off, I believe these are 13s or 10s or 12s. We're going to take them all out here, all the way around to get the cradle off for the cams. Okay, so once you take the cradle off, you have to uh, be careful. You have O-rings here. And on this one over here, this is the front of the engine. This is the passenger side. This one right here has a filter, a little filter right here. Okay, I thought it had two, but I, I think it only has one. I think this is the input of the, um, so it cleans the, the oil coming out of here and then going back to there. I'm, when I take the other side off, I'm going to see if there's another filter on both, but I think it's only on the one. This is where an O-ring goes, and this is where the other O-ring goes. Okay, and uh, just watch out for the seals on the injectors. Okay, over here, there's an injector seal here, and this one's still in there. So when you take it out, be careful. And now when you take the, when you, uh, Put these, this is the right hand side, you make sure you put all the uh, the rockers all the way 
they're in the right positions. Okay, so now we're gonna take the head bolts off. And these, when I took these bolts off, they were a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna see what this is and we're gonna take the head bolts off. And don't forget the lifters. They're inserted in the holes over there. You gotta take them out and make sure that they go exactly where you put them back. Okay, for the head bolts, I used a 14 millimeter 12 point socket um, and it worked pretty good. It's not exact, but it puts enough pressure. You won't strip it unless you have that special socket, which I don't think you're gonna need. Okay, so now after that, before you take off the um, head, there's two options over here. If you can get this tube loose, okay, the EGR tube, you could break it loose and then take it off with the head. If not, you can take over, over here, there's two 10 millimeters. You can take them off, just try to break the seal a little bit, and then just take the uh, head out like that. Uh, if you're not taking it off, you don't plan on taking this off, or if it just doesn't want to come off. Uh, I broke it loose with a, with a, um, with a breaker bar and a, an adjustable wrench. It came loose, but sometimes they don't. So that's just an option. So now we just take the head off. So basically you just do the uh, repeat the same procedure on the other side. I'm not going to show you that because it's exactly the same. The only thing is you have a pipe here. Now a lot of times these pipes like this one is pretty rusted. So, you know, it's a good idea to replace this because if you, you, you put it in and it starts leaking, you know, it's going to be a pain in the neck. It's right here. It's right out in the open. You could just replace it. I'm going to replace it. So other than that, you just, there's a, there's a 10 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter here. And then you just take off the head the same exact way as, as we did the right one. All right, I'm going to do that, and then we're going to continue from there. Okay, so I took the other side off. Remember I was talking about the uh, oil screen? This one has one here. It doesn't have another one here. So it's only one here and one on the other one, like I thought. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was missing. I didn't know. But this was never taken apart, I don't believe, on this side anyway. And it only has the one. So there's one on the one side and one on the other side. So I'm basically going to stop the video from here. Uh, without going any further because seeing all this um, uh, connecting rods and piston material, the short block is destroyed. So um, I got a new one, well, a used one, a good used one. And you can see all the uh, connecting rods are not discolored. And it's a good one. This one actually was burning a little bit of oil. So what I'm going to do to this one, I'm going to make another video on how to take the pistons out, take the rings out. You can either clean the rings or put new rings in them because sometimes the rings get all gunked up and they burn a little oil. So that's what happened with this one. I got this from a Subaru dealer and they just replaced the whole thing. So this is a good one. And no sense taking this apart yet. I'm going to make a video how to split the cases. That's a separate video. But right for right now, if you, you wanted to know how to take the, the, the heads off, uh, the pan, or the valve covers and all of that stuff. And now after when I start rebuilding, I'm going to make videos how to line it up and how to line the timing up and all of that good stuff. All right. Water pump is right here. If you wanted to take it off, you got your 10 millimeter bolts, six, seven of them. This comes right off. It's easy to do. And, um, and that's it for now. All right, guys, motor car up. Please subscribe, hit the like button. Any questions below, leave them below. I answer all my questions. This one over here, um, that's all material of the piston and the, and the bearings destroyed. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. All right. all right, guys, I really appreciate all the comments, and uh, I, I thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.